Hey there econ students, welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be talking about different economic indicators that can make you a better investor. We'll be getting into the GDP, job growth, unemployment, the CPI. We're going to talk about housing, a bunch of different things. So make sure to follow along with your guided notes. You can follow them in the description below and let's figure out what's going on with the economy. So this video is just an introduction to all these different economic indicators. We're going to see these indicators come back up throughout all of our units. So it'll be important to understand the basics so when we get to the more in-depth coverage, you will have already some prior knowledge. So make sure to pay attention. Our first indicator is GDP. And GDP is made up of a couple different components. We have our consumption, investment, our government spending, and we also have net imports and exports. Now we have to actually subtract there because we have to take out our net imports because GDP is only looking at the production that is inside our country. And when GDP is growing and we have GDP growth, we are seeing more production, more spending, both from businesses and consumers. That normally is a signal that times are good. When talking about the stock market, that could mean that quarterly reports are gonna be good or that overall, People are doing well. They'll continue to spend, which means companies will have better times, better earnings, and better reports. So when GDP is good, that's a really big thing. That's positive. And you, whenever this happens, we're going to see politicians talk about it all the time because they love to talk about GDP, especially when it's good, because that means overall the country is doing well economically. So that's important to understand for when we're investing. If it's down, well, that's a different story. Now, all of a sudden, we might want to be a little bit more careful. When GDP starts to plummet, that means production goes down. When production goes down, then we start to see companies have to actually lay people off. People have less money to spend, and we could start to see a slowing economy, which would hurt businesses and their sales. So that's important to understand as well. Our next economic indicators are the CPI and the PPI. Now these are really important because they show us what's going on with inflation in the economy. And that is huge, especially if you're investing. If we start to have a lot of inflation, well, people's money are worth less. And so we start to see spending decrease. Goods cost more. And if they cost more, you can't buy as many of them. So we start to see a slowing economy. And that is a red flag. Now the CPI is our consumer price index. How we figure this out is the Bureau of Labor Statistics, they're the ones who calculate it, they will take a basket of goods. Let's say that we have bread and eggs and we have some orange juice in there. They would compare that basket of goods then year after year after year to see how price has changed. If as the years go on, all of a sudden the price of those goods goes up, well now we can see that inflation's happening. The goods haven't changed at all, but now they cost more. If the price of those baskets of goods goes down, well then we can see deflation's happening. Now when we have inflation, if we have to pay more for that basket of goods, that means we have less money to spend on other things. And if we have deflation, that makes we have more money. And so that's a good thing. So this is important, especially with investing. If we start to see inflation happening, then we know that then people are going to be spending less. They just don't have as much money. Their value of their money is currently less. While they might be making the same amount, they actually have less because it's not worth as much. Now the PPI is our producer price index. This is the one that looks at what's going on with raw materials and intermediate goods. Intermediate goods, in case you don't remember from some of the other videos, those are goods that are used to produce a final good. Now the PPI looks at how much money a company has to pay for certain goods. And if we start comparing these goods year after year, if all of a sudden the price goes up, well, we know then that we're starting to see inflation for the production side of our economy. And if that means that we're starting to see more goods cost more, well, then the CPI is going to go up. And so we start to see inflation all over the board. And that could lead to a slowing economy with less goods being produced and less people buying. So that's important to note while investing, it's important to have a good understanding of what's going on with inflation. Because if you don't, well, you might be on the wrong side. You might think, oh, the price of goods is going up. That's great. I can make more without realizing, though, the company's not going to make more money. So you won't make more on your investments because they're seeing inflation in the PPI. And also because of the inflation in the consumer market, people are buying less. So it's important to have a good understanding of these 
examples here. Another economic indicator that we can look at is business inventories. Now this might seem kind of weird, but think about it for a second. If we start looking at the manufacturing, the wholesale warehouses, the retail reports, you can see what's selling, what's not. If we see all of a sudden that a company is drastically running out of their product and they are constantly trying to refill orders, we can see that demand is high. They'll probably have a good quarter. Or if maybe the company reports that, oh, we shipped out all these goods, but none of them are selling and people aren't refilling those orders, well, they're probably gonna have a bad quarter then. They need to sell. So inventories for businesses are really important. A lot of investors will actually check this to see what's going on. Even with now our digital market with iTunes, with Amazon, people will check their top list. What's selling? What's the top smartwatch? What's the top smartphone? What's the top app this week? What's going on with music? All these different things can show where are consumers at? What are they buying and what are they not? If you have a bunch of inventory, that's not a good sign. You don't wanna be sitting on inventory. You would rather as a company be selling out and have to fulfill purchase orders than be sitting there and hoping that eventually someone buys some of it. So when business inventories are up, that's normally not a good sign. But when they're low, that means they're gonna to have to produce more, which will mean making more money and they're selling. So that's an important economic indicator to see what's going on with your individual business that you may be investing in. The next economic indicator we have is the Consumer Confidence Report. What this report shows is how are people feeling about the economy, about the country? Are we doing well? Is the economy strong? Do people think that a recession's coming? If we have a strong consumer confidence report, that shows that people feel good, that they're more likely to start spending, they're more likely to buy big ticket items, and they're also more likely to take risks. If we're an investor, then that means, hey, our company, depending on what industry we're in, might do really well. People keep buying things, especially if you're investing in things that are expensive. A good consumer confidence report could mean a good quarterly report for your company, which would mean a rising share value. Now, on the other hand, if we have a bad consumer conference report, that shows that people are worried about the country. They're worried about the economy. They'll probably start saving more. They're going to reduce their spending. If people think a recession's coming, they're not going to go out of their way to buy big ticket items. They're also going to make sure that they have enough money to protect themselves. So when spending goes down, that makes it harder for some companies. So it's important to understand this report, especially depending on what sector you are in because it can have a lot of impact on your company. The next one that we have is the housing starts. Now housing starts are just how many new homes are being built. And you might not think that houses have that big of an impact on the economy. Like, why are we talking about this? This doesn't have to do anything with a company. I mean, unless you're a housing company that builds houses or like Menards or Home Depot that is gonna supply resources to be able to build them. But housing is actually really important. The housing starts again are showing how many new houses are being built. And one of the important things about houses is that's actually 25% of all investment dollars in the United States are in homes. That's 5% of our total economy. This is all according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Now, with this though, we can see houses have a huge impact on the economy. That's why in 2008, when we had the housing crash, it brought down everything. So it's really important to understand what's going on in the housing market. If the housing market's struggling, well, that means a lot of people's investment dollars are gonna be tied up. And we're going to start to see probably a slowdown in our entire economy. Our last two economic indicators are the job growth report and also the unemployment index. These are really important because it can show what's happening with the private sector. Are we seeing an increase in jobs, meaning more people are getting hired, more people are making money, and now companies, because they're hiring more, normally means they're doing well. I mean, if a company is doing poorly, they're not gonna start hiring more people because that adds costs. At the same time too, we have the unemployment index. Are we seeing low unemployment or is unemployment on the rise? If unemployment is on the rise, that's a bad sign. That means people are being laid off and they won't have money to spend, which then decreases company profits, forcing them to lay more people off. So both of these reports can give us a good understanding of what's going on with the consumers and also with the private sector. And they're important to understand so you have a good understanding of kind of what's going on and what may happen. And while these economic indicators by no means help us predict the future, they do help us make some smart decisions. It's important to understand these so we can get a good grasp on what's happening with the broader economy, what's happening with society in general.
Make sure you check out some of my other videos that'll go into PE ratios, dividends, and dividend yields, and how to invest and just what to look for. Those will be important for our unit and understanding exactly what's going on with the stock and even the bond market. I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you for stopping by. I hope this video helped you better understand economic indicators. Don't forget to subscribe and support the channel. And until next time, I'll see you online.